My sisters, brothers, siblings of the Episcopal Diocese of Northern Indiana, grace and peace be with you in Jesus, the light for all people. Good morning, saints. Thank you for your faithful and steadfast witness as Christians on the Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement. So let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, you've given the Holy Spirit to abide with us forever. Bless, we pray, with his grace and presence, the bishops and other clergy and laity here assembled in your name for the 123rd Diocesan Convention, that your church, being preserved in true faith and godly discipline, may fulfill all the mind of Christ, being preserved in true faith with him who loved it and gave himself for it, your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. God of the present moment, God who in Jesus stills the storm and soothes the frantic heart, bring hope, courage, and healing to those with the COVID-19 virus as they wait in uncertainty. Bring hope that you will make us the equal of whatever lies ahead. Bring us courage to endure what cannot be avoided for your will is health and wholeness. You are God, and we need you now and forever. Almighty God, who created us in your own image, grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no peace with oppression, and that we may reverently use our freedom Help us to employ it in the maintenance of justice in our communities and among the nations. To the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. My friends, I begin by acknowledging the ground upon which we stand, upon which these churches are built the land of the Miami, Potawatomi, Kaskaskia, Peoria, and Kikapu, the first peoples of this land. Acknowledgement is one way to begin to repair the breach with our indigenous siblings due to the actions of our forebears. I also want to acknowledge the privilege I have because of my gender and the color of my skin. I acknowledge my complicity in the sin of racism and I'm seeking ways to repair the wounds caused by white supremacy among my siblings of color. Lastly, I want to acknowledge our shared grief and lament that we've all experienced as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Since March of 2020, we have been living on a daily basis with the effects of COVID-19. It has changed every aspect of our lives, in our households and families, in our faith communities, in our towns and cities, in our workplaces, in our schools, in our camping ministries, in our faith formation ministry, in how we baptize people into the saving mysteries of Christ's death and resurrection, to how we give thanks for those loved ones who've died and have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. I give thanks for each of you, especially the clergy and lay leaders of our faith communities. These days of COVID-19 have given us the opportunity to be in conversation about the array of concerns stemming from this pandemic that none of us could ever have imagined. Thank you for your leadership, your fidelity, your generosity, your honesty, and vulnerability. As of Friday, the 12th of November, there have been 
988,000 confirmed cases throughout the world and 5,099,686 deaths. In the United States, there have been 47,700,489 confirmed cases and 780,805 deaths. Let us uphold in our prayer these beloved children of God. Let us also give thanks for those responsible for developing the vaccines that are indeed life-saving in our day. And today I'm especially thankful that our children ages five through 11 are now able to receive the vaccine. I want to take this time to thank our standing committee, the diocesan council, the finance committee, the commission on ministry, the constitution and canons committee, the directors of the foundation, the faithful stewards commission, the becoming beloved community commission, our evangelism commission, the Creation Care Commission, and our Social Concerns Committee, who have continued to do the good work entrusted to them during this time. I also want to take this opportunity to thank our missioners, Canon Terry Bays, Canon Carol Bianchini, Canon Christopher Hillock, Canon Sharon Katona, Canon Henry Randolph, Canon Michelle Walker, and Canon Ann Wheatstock. Thank you for your attention to detail, your counsel and advice, the many Zoom calls, your candor and honesty, and for the countless hours of service to our faith communities, attending to the mission, ministry, and management of the Episcopal Diocese of Northern Indiana. Would you also join me in giving thanks for Karen and Bishop Frank Gray, for Claudia and Bishop Ed Little, and for the love of my life, Dana. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Wash, O oh God, our sons and daughters, where your cleansing waters flow. Number them among your people, bless as Christ blessed long ago. Weave them garments bright and sparkling, Compass them with love and light. Fill, anoint them, send your spirit, holy dove and heart's delight. This is my sixth convention serving as your bishop. At my first convention in 2016, I invited us to focus our lives in mission and ministry on the five marks of mission adopted by the Anglican Communion many years ago. We are called to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, to baptize, to teach, baptize, and nurture new believers, to respond to human need by loving service, to seek to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind, and to pursue peace and reconciliation, to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. These five marks, to tell, teach, tend, transform, and treasure, center and direct all that we do as disciples of Jesus, the risen Christ. 
We who bring them long for nurture, by your milk may we be fed. Let us join your feast partaking, cup of blessing, living bread. God, renew us, guide our footsteps, free from sin and all its snares. One with Christ in living, dying, by your spirit, children heirs. In the summer of 2018, the Diocese of Northern Indiana was invited to participate in an initiative called Baptized for Life, designed by the faculty and staff of Virginia Theological Seminary and funded by the Lilly Endowment. I want to offer my thanks to Lisa Kimball and all those involved in Baptized for Life, Vida and Abundancia for the opportunity they've provided three of our faith communities over the last three years. You'll hear more about this initiative throughout our convention today. However, I would like to focus several words and phrases that will help us to engage God's mission during the coming year. As God's beloved children through baptism, we are called to a life of resilience. Resilience defined as the capacity of a dynamic system to adapt successfully to challenges that threaten the function, survival, or future development of that system. A life of resilience is nurtured by particular practices. As disciples on the Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement, those practices are articulated in the baptismal covenant in the Book of Common Prayer. After affirming our faith in God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and God the Holy Spirit, with God's help, we promise to continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers. We promise to persevere in resisting evil, and whenever we fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. We promise to proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. We promise to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves. And we promise to strive for justice and peace among all people, respecting the dignity of every human being. These practices of continuing, breaking bread, praying, persevering, repenting, returning, proclaiming, seeking and serving, loving, striving, and respecting enable us to live out the five marks of mission, telling, teaching, tending, treasuring, transforming. These practices enable us to live lives of resilience. We are also invited to listen to a diversity of voices and perspectives that may differ from our own. These practices invite us into times of discernment. As we listen to the scripture, we are invited to ask where the scripture touches our lives, our communities, our nation, and the world. What does God want me to do or to be at this time? How might God be inviting me to change? These practices invite us to collaborate in new and creative ways with resilience and elasticity. These practices 
invite us to engage the hard and difficult work set before us. Trusting always in God's abiding and amazing grace. Oh, how deep your holy wisdom, unimagined all your ways. To your name be glory, honor. With our lives we worship praise. We, your people, stand before you, water washed and spirit born. By your grace, our lives we offer. Recreate us, God transform. I'm baptized for life for abundant life. Many of us gathered together today were baptized as infants or as very young children. Some of us perhaps remember when we were confirmed, making a mature public affirmation of the promises made for us at our baptism. In just a few moments, we will have the opportunity to renew our baptismal vows and I would encourage you to call upon God's holy and healing spirit to fill you with the grace and strength that you need to claim once again your life as God's beloved children, baptized for life into the saving death and resurrection of Jesus. Each of us is formed by our life experiences where we were born where our parents were, who our parents were, their financial status, the color of their skin, their educational opportunities, just to name a few. These experiences form the stories of our lives. Each of us have love stories, money stories, and faith stories that have formed and shaped us into the people we are today. I want to share a baptismal story with you in hopes of rekindling the joy, the hope, and the promise of God's Spirit given to each of us in baptism. During open office hours in the summer of 2001, Melanie arrived with her two sons, Clark and Patrick. They'd moved to Wisconsin and became actively involved at St. Matthias in Waukesha. <laughs> Melanie asked if Clark and Patrick could begin preparing for baptism because she and her husband, Fred, had decided to wait on having them baptized until they could make a commitment of their own. So we began meeting regularly to prepare them for baptism. At our final meeting, Melanie asked, if it might be possible for Clark and Patrick to be baptized by immersion rather than pouring water over their heads. Without hesitation and not exactly knowing how, I said, yes. They chose the first Sunday in Advent to be baptized. So I called the altar guild directress and discussed my idea with her. I made my way to Menards and purchased, purchased an animal watering trough and set it in front of the baptismal font about this high. The church building, oh, we, we placed flowers around it so that it blended in a bit more with the environment. The church building of St. Matthias was built in, in the 1850s with only cold water plumbing. Early Sunday morning, I made my way with several sections of hose to fill the trough before the second service. Clark and Patrick showed up with their parents in their bathing suits and t-shirts, and at the second service, I proceeded to baptize them by immersion. 
As was my custom, I invited all the children to join me around the baptismal trough. The water was freezing as I immersed them three times, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Fortunately, they stepped out to warmed towels, were sealed with holy chrism, and marked as Christ's own forever. It was a wonderful and unforgettable experience in my life in ministry. Melanie and Fred, they had tears coming down their eyes, and they thanked me for make, making baptism by immersion available to their sons. And guess what else happened? Almost every child present for Clark and Patrick's baptism, that first Sunday of Advent, ran up to me asking if they could be baptized again. Siblings in Christ, remember the gift of your baptism. I invite you, if you haven't already done so, to find your baptismal certificate. Look at it. Look at it for the date. Identify the church, the faith community, and the people who serve perhaps as your sponsors and the clergy person who baptized you. Then take the opportunity to share your baptismal information with one of your siblings in Christ in the faith community that you are a part of during the coming months. Remember, you are baptized for life, for abundant life. We, your people, stand before you, water washed and spirit born. By your grace, our lives we offer. Recreate us, God transform.